In this video, I am going to provide you with two truss repairs that just might work. With small trusses, maybe a truss that's going to be less than 16 feet wide. And in a situation where you cut all the way through the top and the bottom cord for a pipe like this. And I also need to point out that I am not a structural engineer and am only going to provide you with something that I think will work based off of my experience. And I will do the best I can to explain what I'm doing with these repairs and how they might make sense. So in the first example, we are going to use a conventionally framed system for this section of the engineered roof system. And for our ceiling joist and roof rafters, we are going to be using 2x6. And I checked the span charts, and 2x6 will work fine for ceiling joist within our 14-foot span, and they're going to be 12 inches on center. Now keep in mind that you might have another situation that you're dealing with that will require larger materials. And of course, I won't be able to provide you with any type of information about lumber sizes for any type of repairs like these. Now another thing you're going to need to do is put another block in here for the roof ridge because you can see here where a 2x4 is not going to be long enough for the 2x6 roof rafter. And you can nail the roof rafters to the block with 16D nails. And make sure that your roof rafters line up with the roof rafters on the other side. And you will need to notch the bottom of the roof rafter and size it accordingly so that it does not stick up beyond the bottom of the roof sheathing otherwise you're not going to be able to get your roof rafter in here and of course I have my roof rafter up against the block your roof rafter might need to be a little bit smaller to get it into this area so obviously not too difficult of a repair if you don't have any roof sheathing or roofing on your house however getting some of these materials in with the roof sheathing and other things that might be in your way might not be as easy as it looks in this video next Next up, let's go ahead and block in between the roof rafters so that we can nail the sections of the trusses on each side to the blocks to provide some type of stabilization. And this can simply be done by end nailing into all of the blocks or by using some type of joist hangers or other types of building hardware. And of course should be done without the pipe in the way, obviously. And you will need to toenail the roof rafters if you possibly can, because this is going to be a tight area to the framing plates. And then end nail into the ceiling joist. Now if you can, toenail the ceiling joist into the top plates also. And if you can't toenail or somehow securely fasten the rafters and the ceiling joist to the top plates with nails, then you might need to use some type of building hardware. But they need to be connected to the plates. Now something else that might be helpful for you is that the ceiling joist might only require an inch and a half distance to sit on top of the wall framing plate. And what we're looking at here is a ceiling joist that's sitting on top of the wall framing plate with three and a half inches. And you might be able to reduce this length by two inches to where it's at least an inch and a half. And this could be helpful if you're having a difficult time getting the ceiling joist into this area. And sometimes you might even need to remove the block here so that you can slide the ceiling joist past a little bit and then slide it into the other side of the wall. And of course, this is going to become obvious once you need to do it. You will see exactly what I'm talking about. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like from below. And we can see where all of the nails are holding everything together. And again, you can always use hangers if you want to. And even though I didn't put the nails here, everything's going to be in nailed and if you're thinking about using screws sometimes screws don't have the structural strength for something like this however I don't think I've ever came to a building where it has came apart because someone used screws instead of nails but again I am not an engineer so let's go ahead and wrap up our first example of course this is the one I would recommend over the second example because I have done something similar to the first example and this next example is just my creativity 
activity getting a little out of control. So bear with me and if something like this makes sense then do what you can to make it work. So here we have the same situation except I'm going to add 4x4s for the ceiling joist. However 4x6 will definitely work better and if you use the 4x6 you will need to shape the top accordingly. And here you can see where the 4x4 is below the top of the roof rafters and below the bottom of the roof sheathing. And same on the other side we're going to go ahead and put some blocks in and you can put these blocks in wherever you think they're going to work best and these blocks are going to serve two purposes for this type of repair and the first purpose will be to attach the bottom cord of the truss to the bottom of the block and this can simply be done by screwing down into the bottom cord and after that's done we're going to go ahead and add our support braces and I would imagine a 2x4 would work here but I used a 2x6 and then two by fours for the vertical supports and you can throw some straps in there to connect everything together wherever they might be needed and in this case the strap is actually going to be holding up the bottom cord and after it's nailed into the block we will get a little more stability there and I went ahead and ran this support brace all the way across to here and then nailed it into the roof rafter and then went ahead and added this support brace that's going to sit on top of this brace and then attach to the center section of the existing roof truss. And here's how I believe the load would be transferred. It's going to go down through the brace here and then transfer to on top of the 2x4 blocks and then down to the 4x4 and then onto the top of each side of the wall framing. So hopefully that makes sense. And then you could always screw from the bottom if you're going to use screws or nail from the bottom in some situations. And hopefully that makes sense. Now another thing I want to point out is that you can always move these blocks over if you have a situation where it might be underneath one of the existing roof truss components. And you can see here when I shove this all the way over I'm going to prevent this section of the roof truss from coming down because it's going to be fitting nice and snug up against the block. So to make sense out of this the only way that this is going to move down would be to move over and then down. And you can simply prevent that by putting a block on the other side. And if you noticed I'm going to provide you with another option here or another thing that might work just as well and that would be to keep the ceiling joist and then only reinforce this section here because you haven't cut this section. In this method here you would simply be reinforcing the side of the roof truss that you cut and then transferring any type of the load down to the ceiling joist. And by now hopefully this makes sense because we are coming to the end of the video and of course I cannot stress this enough that I am not a structural engineer and that these repairs might not actually work on your particular project. So with that said feel free to hit the thumbs up button if you like the video and learned something and of course any questions and comments leave them in the video comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible possible.